I'm Sam with CN Seamless, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to take the machine from being in the case to putting on the material, laying out your design, and running a cut. First thing I'm gonna do is open these four latches here. So one latch, two, three, four latches. Right now I have the OxyFuel attachment on, I'm gonna go and take it out. So take your machine like this, sit on your steel, and then take your cord and plug that thing in. You probably know roughly where you want to cut your shape, so I'm gonna be cutting about this area, so I'm gonna get the machine out of the way of that. Right there, that'll work. Now, if you're using the OxyFuel attachment like I am, you're also gonna wanna put a tip on, so take your tip and put that on. And then you can use these straps to actually kinda of hold the hoses roughly in place. Next, you're gonna to wanna to grab your tablet out of the case. And when you first turn it on, it's not gonna be connected to the machine, so you're not gonna be able to control it. So click on this button right here, Click on the Wi-Fi icon, and then select the network name CNSeamless whatever number your machine is. Now that the tablet is connected to the machine, we can go and pull it out of eStop. So that's just gonna get the machine initialized. So press this reset button right there. Your machine's gonna lift up and home itself so it knows where it is in the world. What I'm gonna be doing today is making a base plate. So I went ahead and made this CAD drawing of the base plate we're gonna make, and I'm gonna show you how to do this in two ways. So the first way we're gonna do it is designing it on the tablet, completely on there. You wouldn't even need this CAD file if you didn't have it. And then the second way I'm gonna show you is if you have a CAD file, you can put it right on there. So let's get started designing it on the tablet. So the quickest thing to do is we're gonna make this rectangle first, and then we're gonna put a circle on the UI as well. So to lay out the rectangle, we're just gonna click Add here and then the little square icon, and we're gonna tell it we want a nine, so click width, set that to nine, and a nine inch tall as well. So that's gonna be setting your height to nine. All these dimensions are referenced to this bottom corner, so it'll be easiest if we keep the rectangle, the corner at zero, zero. So the next thing we're gonna do is go and put that circle in the middle, so we're gonna click add again, circle, so we will set this diameter value to be four, and we want the center to be at the center of the rectangle, so that's four and a half, four and a half. There you go, you have a rectangle in the center. So the last step is to lay out this bolt hole pattern. Back on the UI, I'm gonna click add again, circle, seven eighths over and seven eighths up. So we have our first circle right there, and now we need to get the other six. Click on that circle, and then click this pattern button. If we go back to the drawing, you can see that the spacing on these going this way, these circles, is three and five eighths. And then the spacing between this one and the top is seven and a quarter. So if we go back to here, we are going to have the spacing in the X be 3.625, that's five eighths. And then the spacing up is gonna be 7.25. We're gonna have three circles along this way and two this way. So when I click done here, there we go, that created that whole pattern that we want. But I'm gonna show you how you could import this shape if you had a CAD model from your engineer or from your detailer. So we'll go ahead and clear this design here that we just made, get rid of that, and I'm gonna pull the flash drive out of my pocket. I've already loaded the DXF of this drawing onto this flash drive, and I'm gonna plug that into the back of the machine. This is gonna be a little bit simpler. All we're gonna have to do is click on Files, and then Load from Flash Drive, and you just scroll down until you find the name of the shape you wanna cut. So in this case, I saved this one as Demo Plate DXF. I'm gonna click on that. So you can see, this is where the shape was loaded by the machine. The last thing we have to do on this is tell the machine uh, where we want it to do the pierces and how we want it to offset the curve. We're gonna click on this outside rectangle and set this to be an outside cut instead of an inside cut. What we have to do now is show the machine where on this material we wanna do the cut. So when we click on the place menu, we're gonna go and reset this orient. And now you can see as I move the torch, it's moving around that design. The problem is the machine is rotated probably like 40 degrees off of this edge. And to save material, we want it to be aligned to this edge. So what we're gonna do for that is I'm gonna go and lower the machine down by holding the down button. And I'm just gonna select any two points along this edge here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is click this, and that's giving us a point that it's gonna rotate that shape around. So you can see as I move this torch back and forth, it rotates that shape. So then I move to just any other point along this line, click the second button, and now it's aligned the shape to this edge. 
Now, there's one more thing we gotta do. So, what that did is it aligned that red line to this edge, but it's rotated off 180 degrees. So, all we're gonna do is press this minus button a couple times, and now you can see as I move this tip around the material, you can make sure that that shape is actually where you want it. So, we go and zoom in here. We have this corner here, that's pretty good. We have this corner here, that's exactly where we placed it. And then this corner here, all we have to do now is press confirm. And now that shape is locked in. The machine right now does not know what you're cutting. So we're gonna go and tell the machine what this material is. And then we're also gonna tell it what tip we put on here. So how I'm gonna do that is press this materials pane right here. But what we're gonna do is change the material. Steel is still good. And then the thickness now is, this is quarter inch, that's gonna be in the range of 3 sixteenths to 3 eighths. And the tip we're using is a double lot. That's what I put on the torch. And this is a propane tip, which is the NX type. So we're gonna click 00, zero NX. And that goes ahead and pulls in all of our cut settings, cut parameters, and that's gonna give us a nice clean cut. So the next thing we're gonna do is click confirm. So at this point, we are ready to run this cut. So I'm gonna go ahead and go and click on run. So that is on the right here. And it's gonna go ahead and process all the things it needs to do before it can cut. And at this point, you would go ahead and light your torch. So you use your preheat flame, preheat valves in the back, light your torch like a hand torch, and then click start. It's gonna raise that machine up, go over to that first pierce point. And remember, it's gonna cut all, on this design, we have a bunch of different shapes but it's gonna cut all the ones inside before it cuts the outer profile. So once you're at the start point, you can go ahead and lower the machine down to a good height to preheat. So we're gonna lower that thing down. And that looks about good right there. So wait for this to preheat, just like you would if you were gonna press a lever by hand. And whenever it's nice and red, press pierce. That's gonna turn on that cutting jet, lift up, pierce, move back down, and start moving around. So you can see it's cutting that circle right there. Does its lead out, it's gonna lift up, go to the next shape, lower back down to where you had it before, and then again, whenever it's preheated, you can click pierce. So if you have a really warped piece of material, you might have to adjust the height during a cut. So you might have a good height here and then it warps down and you're a little high off the material over here. So what you can do is you can adjust the height during the cut. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift this up like that. You can lower it back down, and that lets you set the right height for every spot in the material. You can also speed up and slow down the cut during the process. And that's gonna be down here with the little tortoise and hare icons. So right now I'm gonna be at 140% of the feed you set originally, so that's gonna speed it up a little bit. Or you can speed it back down all the way to zero inches per minute. Click pierce, it's gonna pierce the material. And you can see it's going pretty slow now. So I'm gonna go and speed that thing back up. Now we're going 130% of the original feed. Now it's going over to the next pierce point. So let's say this is a really thick piece of material that might take a while to preheat. You can always test whether it's preheated by just tapping this O2 button right underneath the e-stop. So what that's gonna do is turn on that cutting jet just for a second to make sure it's preheated before you actually pierce and run the cut. Test that a couple times, click pierce, piercing, and it's moving. Now let's say something happens during the cut. So you run out of oxygen, you get a little aggressive, moving too fast, and it outruns the cut. All you have to do is click pause, it's gonna lift it up, and you can hold this rewind button to go back to where it left off from. Once you're ready, you don't wanna have to pierce right on your nice edge, because that's gonna leave a nasty cut. So you can use these offset buttons down below to offset the torch and give it a new pierce point. So we're gonna do a nice pierce right in the middle of the circle so it's not gonna interfere with our cut. Press resume, and just like before, wait for it to preheat, press pierce, and the pierce, and start moving. Now, let's say you have a cut that has even more holes than this, and you wanna be able to just set this thing and walk away. What you can do for that is time how long it takes for it to preheat the material, and then set the preheat time in your materials. 
And what that's gonna let you do is it's going to pierce automatically after it preheats for the set amount of time. So for the very first pierce, it's not gonna use that timer. So what I would do is sit here, wait for it to preheat, and probably set a stopwatch on your phone or your watch and see about how long it takes for it to preheat. So let's say it took 25 seconds to preheat this piece of quarter inch. We'll go ahead and press pierce on this first shape. And while it's running, we're gonna go back to materials and edit this preheat time value. So we'll set this to 25. And then for the next shape it does, it's gonna sit here and wait for 25 seconds and then pierce. It's gonna do that for all the subsequent pierces as well. If you find out that that time is too long or too short, you can always go back during the cut and adjust this preheat time value. So this is a really convenient option if you don't wanna to have to sit here the entire time, you will be able to walk away, or you have multiple machines running. So thanks for watching our tutorial on how to use the CNC Seamless User Interface. We really hope that was helpful. As always, as a CNC Seamless customer, you have access to our personal phone numbers and our email addresses. If you ever have any questions or you have any features you wanna request, Reach out to us at any time and we'll help you through your issue or maybe develop something you're looking for. Thanks and I hope you have a great day.